Since January, trail runners of the world have traveled around the globe to explore the most scenic mountain trails. Thousands of ultra trail amateurs and elite take part in a total of 22 races. At the end of August, the place to be is Chamonix for the World's Trail Running Summit. UTMB, four very popular letters within the ultra running community that every elite athlete's dream of doing at least once. A 170k loop around Europe's highest summit, the Mont Blanc, that offers no less than 10,000 meters of elevation gain. Elite athletes have come from all over the world to come and compete in the 15th edition of the race. For a week, Chamonix turns into the world's trail running capital city. UTMB has never been so highly expected. For the first time in history, all the best ultra runners have come for a massive throwdown. Never had this race attracted so many spectators along the course and in the streets of Chamonix. An atmosphere so enthused it almost feels like the Tour de France. With two wins under his belt, the winemaker from Beaujolais, François Den, has dominated all competitors, including Kylian Jornet, who had come back once more, and until then had been undefeated on this course. The race kept its suspense up with a phenomenal duel that will last until the very final hours. François earns a third title and in the process creates a league of his own, finishing in an astonishing time of 19 hours, 1 minute and 54 seconds. C'est l'impression d'avoir eu une haie d'honneur de la folie jusqu'à la jusqu'à l'arrivée, c'était 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 juste fabuleux les gens qui se déplaçaient pour nous suivre tout le long, tout le long, tout le long, il y avait du monde partout dans les montées, dans les descentes, au ravitaillement, c'était juste incroyable. Puis bah l'arrivée, c'est c'est un bain de foule assez gigantesque et puis Puis émotionnellement, voilà, c'est vrai qu'on l'attend ce, ce, ce dernier kilomètre. Donc euh, non, ça fait... Je réalise pas encore tout à fait, mais ça fait chaud, quoi. All-time champion and showing great fair play, Kylian Jornet has enjoyed the fight with his teammate. Le plus dur, c'est sûr que c'est le niveau qu'il y avait. Euh, C'était que les rythmes, elles étaient très élevés. Donc du coup, ça menait, euh, ça menait une course très rapide. Et il faut tenir. Courir avec Jim, avec François, t'es toujours... Euh, au 100% et c'est ça qui c'est ça qui est beau dans la compétition c'est se pousser et voir où est-ce qu'on est qu peut, peut aller The female winner is Nuria Piquez she crossed the finish line at night after 25 hours and 45 minutes of racing It was a mix of happiness and don't believe what happened in this moment a lot of people there wow it was amazing Nuria Piquez finally wins UTMB ahead of Andrea Huser second place finisher once again only 2 minutes and 30 seconds back from the Spanish runner. It was like last year. <laughs> I came so close to Nuria. Nuria. That was also like last year. Uh, I didn't think about I can go so close to to a superstar like Nuria Picas. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it's like a victory, and I'm very happy.
Tim Tollefson, third place finisher in 2016, has come back this year to better his performance and experience once again the intense emotions of making it onto the podium. Last year finishing third at UTMB was incredible. It, uh, it really was, it was neat to see something that I had dreamt about come, you know, kind of to fruition and become a reality. And being able to kind of have the race that I had trained for come together on race day was a pretty incredible thing. Um, in between, you know, just 22 and a half hours out in the mountains surrounding Mont Blanc, that was, you know, definitely the highlight. But then to be able to, you know, sort of make my way up through that world-class field and finish on the podium was something I, I definitely will not forget. My name is Tim Tolfson. I live in Mammoth Lakes, California. I am a physiotherapist here and I am 32 years old. My wife, Lindsay, and I decided to move to Mammoth initially back in 2011 for the road running. Uh, we were marathoners at the time and we knew that high altitude training was beneficial. And then a few years later, I realized that uh, instead of just limiting myself to the roads, I could finally explore the, you know, the towering peaks over town and really get into the backcountry by embracing trail running. And so just the last couple of years, I've been venturing further and further into this ultra world and being able to play in our backyard. In the Eastern Sierra where I live, we have some incredible trails to run and a lot of them can mimic the demands of the exact UTMB course or the TMB. And so I'll be out on a course and visualizing, you know, the drop down into the Trient or, you know, the climb out of Valarcine, you know, the, you know, going through Lesus. There are all these places that I, I do kind of picture while I'm out there training and, and uh, I kind of put myself in back in the race mode sometimes. And I think it's just something that's really kind of captured my mind and my interest where I, I have this goal of, you know, returning and hopefully being the top American and being the first American male to ever win UTMB. I know a lot of other guys are out vying for the same thing, but, uh, you know, I, I'm confident that I'll be able to put in the necessary training and I have a respect for the mountain that I think is needed and a respect for the distance that hopefully with, you know, an intelligent kind of race strategy, I, I can, you know, walk away with a, a pretty, pretty epic performance. When I hit Le Flagere, you know, you're, you're only maybe eight kilometers from the finish. And I recall just pushing as hard as I could down that, trying to catch Gididimus. And uh, you, you know you're almost home. You can smell the finish line. You just have to make it down some kind of nasty switchbacks and then all the way into the valley. And it, but it's interesting because as you're dropping, you, you can hear the valley floor, but it feels like it's not getting closer. You're, it just, you keep going and going and going, but uh, it's, it's a tough, tough descent to finish a 106 mile race. Now there comes a time when it's time to roll. The big day approaching, elite athletes gather for the press conference. The group photo captures an unprecedented amount of talent. Je suis Olivier Cagnard, 49 ans, sportif depuis, depuis toujours et trailer depuis 4 ans. J'ai un ami avec qui je, je fais des marathons depuis toujours, qui m'a parlé du, de l'UTMB il, il y a 4 ans. Et sachant qu'il l'avait fait, ah, c'était comme un rêve. Donc petit à petit, on s'est mis à faire des trails avec des amis. Puis on a augmenté les distances, 30, 50, 70, 80, 100, 120. J'ai fait la TDS en 2015. Et puis, euh, puis aujourd'hui, ça y est, enfin, on y est. Age and level differences are forgotten while elite athletes and amateur mix up. 
An informal jog is organized to offer everyone the opportunity to share their personal experiences, passion, and expectations about the race. Kelly Emerson trained for this race back in Australia where she lives and coaches athletes, an environment entirely different from the one Chamonix offers. For me, I, I really like coaching because, um, yeah, I love sharing my, my passion for the sport, um, sharing my knowledge and my experience and things that I've learned over time. Um, I like being able to share that with people and, and I love being able to bring out the best in people and, and seeing them improve and seeing other people achieve things that they never thought possible. Gonna need to fight and you better start now! I guess I just, I really like the challenge and, um, you know, I'm not often thinking about my competitors, it's more about competing with myself and um, being able to, to push myself to, to places that I, you know, d didn't know were possible or you never know whether you're going to finish because um, every race is different and it's always a there's always a new challenge and, um, you know, anything can happen in those sort of distances. My main mantra is to just hike the shit out of it. <laughs> um, I tell all my clients that too because um, you know I've won a lot of races from from walking and people um, get fearful that in, in trail running you're not allowed to, allowed to walk but it's all about being really smart and knowing your body and how um, you move efficiently and if you can get to the top of a mountain whatever way, the fastest way um, but while still maintaining some energy, you, you know, you can then um, run down the backside of it and, and have a good go. I guess my objective for UTMB is, is to have a good race, to have a consistent race um, and to, to finish well. Um, it's my first 100 mile race, going straight to the top and uh, that's a little bit scary but um, you know, I have a pretty strong determination and I, I am confident that I, I, can, I can get there. I'm prepared to hurt. My plan for the race, um, I guess, is just to, to try and be conservative early on and uh, I do have an uh, elite start but I'm going to make sure I don't try and head off with all of those uh, very experienced women. So I'm just going to try and do my own thing, be, you know, go out um, slow and steady and hopefully stay that way through the whole race. And um, I'd really like to do under 30 hours, but uh, it's a complete unknown. So fingers crossed and who knows. The main thing that I'm worried about is, the, is fatigue. I, um, you know, I've never been on my feet for more than 15 hours in a race, so I'm going to, you know, probably double that. Um, so, yeah, just not knowing how that's going to feel and, and knowing how to push through that. Um, you know, that is a bit scary not knowing that, but um, uh, that's OK. Yeah. In a small chalet, away from the buzz of Chamonix, Kelly's finally ready. Final shake of her race pack before heading out to the start. The apprehension of such a challenge meets the excitement of the journey ahead. She joins the several thousands of participants that are gathering in downtown Chamonix hours before the start. All are trying to create their own space in a now packed crowd behind the starting line. In the front row, all top runners are ready. The highly expected Jim Walmsley, Caroline Chavot, Killian Jornet, François Din, Pau Capel, and all the others. The legs are now begging to go and runners deal with the weight with different attitudes before being finally released in the streets full of ecstatic spectators.
clouds have darkened the skies of the late afternoon and the first drops of rain appear at the Col de Vos. There, three runners have already broken away from the pack. Jim Walmsley, known for his ever so fast start, followed by Zach Miller and Kylian Jornet. A few meters back, François Den and Xavier Thévenard are followed by Toffel Castanier. The mid-pack is moving up in a continuous stream of runners up the first switchbacks of their course. At the Saint-Gervais 8 station, Jim Wormsley is in the lead, but contrary to his usual strategy, he takes the time to refill and even waits for his competitors before heading out again. A very surprising move from the fiery American runner. Runner extraordinaire Kylian Jornet arrives in second place under a cheering crowd out of control. He leaves the aid station with Jim Wormsley, both followed by Xavier Thévenard, François Den, Pau Capel, and a little ways back Diego Passos. very strict strategy when I race. Yeah, I usually like to race out in the front and I usually like to race aggressive, but um, I also know 100 miles is a long way and these mountains are very hard, so uh, we will see. It is still too early in a race to make any sort of prediction about the potential winners. The front runners are restocking carefully at the aid station to deal with the long night coming ahead. It has been forecasted to be cold and wet. Nuria Picas is leading the female's field in Saint-Gervais. She looks determined, but the runner-up Emilie Lecomte is not too far behind. Last year's winner Caroline Chavreau remains hidden in third place, chasing down her competition from the back. She is just ahead of Andrea Huser, who was second to her last year. Ça peut être le genre de course où il va y avoir des feuilletons dans le feuilleton. Là, cette année, il va y avoir des rebondissements dans tous les sens. On va voir arriver des Des, des, des retours de l'arrière qu'on n'aurait jamais cru improbable, des gens qui vont craquer, qui vont revenir. Enfin, je pense que c'est l'année où effectivement euh, euh, toutes les conditions sont réunies pour que ce soit un, pour les personnes qui vont suivre ça de l'extérieur, parce que les coureurs, nous, on sera chacun dans notre coin, mais bah, ça va être un feuilleton extraordinaire et rien que pour ça, ça va être, ça va être fabuleux à suivre, je pense, pour toutes les personnes qui vont suivre cette course-là. It is now pitch black and the runners are dealing with rain and strong winds. The climb up to Col du Bonhomme at 2,300 meters is the first challenge of the race. Jim Walmsley and François Den are leading the race, running against unforgiving gusts of winds. The next section is the downhill towards Les Chapieux, where the mandatory equipment is checked before the runners can carry on up Col de la Seigne. All listed items must be carried at all times. In the rush of the race, Jim Wormsley forgets to put his t-shirt back in his pack and wastes a few seconds turning around to go and pick it up. 
long sleeves and waterproof jackets are now put on to avoid getting cold in such rough conditions. This would be disastrous so early in the race. Nuria Picas is still in the lead in the women's field, ahead of Caroline Chavreau, who's not looking as fresh as usual. Hey, Running at night is an essential skill to run UTMB. It's seen as the first part of the race that needs to be managed while preserving its strength and start pushing in the second half of the race, the day after. Three runners are now leading the race. Kylian Jornet, Jim Walmsley and François Dane are sticking together and leaving their competition behind in a dark, cold night. <laughs> Meanwhile, Nuria Picas carries on at her own pace ahead of Caroline Chavo. After temperatures have dropped below freezing, snow slowly covers the ground, making the race conditions even harder than usual. For many people, des gens comme Kylian, c'est des alpinistes. C'est des gens qui ont l'habitude d'avoir froid, de gérer le froid, de savoir que quand il faut manger, boire, même en mauvaise condition. Maintenant, tous ne sont pas prêts à ça, et je dois avouer que c'est là où la différence pourrait se faire. Eight hours into the race, Jim Walmsley arrives at the kilometer 80 to find the Courmayeur aid station. The American runner is ahead of most optimistic estimations. He changes clothes and restocks. François Dane comes in next, looking fresh, and Killian Jornet follows a few seconds behind. After a well-managed transition, François Dane leaves alone on the next part of the course. Often, the race starts after this aid station, even though there's still 90 kilometers to cover. Dry and perked up, Jim Walmsley is the second runner to leave the aid station. Kelly and Jornet laces up his shoes and jogs away from the aid station, not worried about his competition. Way more stoked, Pau Capel, Ultra Trail World Tour leader, rushes through the aid station to leave with the right group of runners. American runners Zach Miller, Tim Tollefson, and Dylan Bowman lead the chase from not too far behind the lead pack. Xavier Tivna, winner of the 2015 edition, is well aware of how far the finish line still is. He takes the time to eat, change shoes, and leaves the aid station just ahead of Gigi Minas Carinius and Jordi Gamito. <laughs> Nuria Piquez is very focused. She's just run the first half of the race in the lead. After her win in Hong Kong earlier this year, she went for an alpinism trip in the Himalayas. During a rough climb, she got pneumonia. It is thus unsure of her fitness level that she came to UTMB, a race that she never managed to win before. In second place, Caroline Chavreau has won the challenging Hard Rock 100 miler in the States. Could she possibly have recovered and go to win UTMB as well? Caroline, who usually leads the race from the get-go, is though unable to stay ahead of Nuria. Changing stuff just for morale, huh? How are your feet? You still got gels anywhere? In your, in your pack? One more? Oh, shove them in your bag. I don't want anything. Oh, yeah. 
you. Fight, fight, fight. Hopefully it was kind of the decision point for me to today I need to let them go and focus on me and get my energy back and th things started to kind of get out of control with with not being able to eat to eat and regroup people were telling me like oh they're only 10 minutes ahead so um, that kind of got me hungry again at dawn, temperatures are low and the atmosphere humid around the Mont Blanc Massif. Rain, strong winds and below freezing temperature have taken a toll on the runners. Jim Wamsley seem to be fading while others like Tim Tollefson, Dylan Bowman, Pau Capel and Xavier Tevnar are still holding on. But for how long? Un adversaire, ce sera ma montre, et puis euh, on verra si ça me situe devant, si ça me situe derrière, si ça me situe plus au milieu. À vrai dire, je sais pas trop où je peux me situer euh, euh, sur le, dans le peloton, quoi. Having battled a stomach bug for the past few weeks, Xavier Tevnar is still at very well ranked. His experience and knowledge of the course allow him for an optimized race management and avoid low times. Behind him, the Spanish runners Jordi Gamito and Miguel Eras seem more spent. Runners are taking advantage of the rolling section of the course to try and recover for the climbs coming ahead. Small changes on the course have added a few road sections toward La Foulie at kilometer 111. With two thirds of the race covered, Killian is still battling it out with Francois. The Catalan runner, everyone's favorite, is surprisingly not able to close the gap on François. J'ai envie de voir aussi ce que va faire Kylian sur une course où il sera peut-être un peu poussé dans ses retranchements. Là, je pense que voilà, sans, sans vouloir avoir la prétention de dire que je peux le battre un jour euh, sur 160 km, je pense que même lui, au départ de la course, euh, il sait pas ce qui peut se passer. Personne sait ce qui peut se passer sur un 160 km, et c'est ça qui fait un peu la magie de ce sport. Donc, euh, donc voilà, tout Kylian qu'il est, et tout, tout coureur qu'on est. Je pense qu'il faut vraiment rester humble face à ça et que voilà, on ne peut pas savoir ce qui va se passer. C'est pour ça que je pense que tout le monde est excité par, par cette édition. A meter 95 tall, the great, as they call him in a meat pack, is about to accomplish one of the greatest and most unexpected accomplishments. Kilometer after kilometer, François is increasing and then maintaining a 15 minutes gap on Kellyan. Thousands of spectators along the course are cheering their national hero François, who's on his way to his victory. Bumping into his father and daughter along the way even added more motivation to cross the finish line in first position. Strong competitor, Killian doesn't give up and pushes through the pain and try to catch Francois. 
Everybody knows how such a strong athlete is capable of pulling the most amazing efforts even when tired. Pour un coureur élite, finir le tombé, c'est facile, évidemment. Euh, après, c'est difficile de, de le gagner ou d'aller vite, quoi. Mais on s'entraîne pour que la difficulté, ça soit aller vite. Hein. Après, c'est sûr qu'il faut se préparer. Moi, je pense qu'il faut toujours se préparer pour que faire la chose soit facile. C'est l'une des seules fois que tu as une ultra et tu dis il y a 10 personnes qui vont jouer les victoires. Donc c'est ça qui est quand même de la compétition. C'est la bataille, c'est être dans, dans la concurrence, c'est un jeu, donc c'est ça qui, qui est motivant. Behind the two runners that are on another level, the battle is on. Just like last year, Tim Tollefson manages his effort perfectly, creeping up slowly but surely to the third place. In Trion, 30 kilometers from the finish line, his light and fast stride is incredible. elle était là, que ça, ça me manquait de ne pas être sur le parcours, tout ça. Donc j'ai décidé à ce moment-là de revenir, de revenir sur la course pour, pour le challenge que ça représente, parce que je sentais que voilà, ça, ça me ferait quelque chose de, de retenter, bah, de partir de Chamonix, de revenir à Chamonix comme ça en une fois. Je, je voulais retenter un petit peu la chose. Et, euh, et donc, euh, donc voilà, le plateau, à l'époque, je ne savais pas du tout lequel il serait. Donc après, c'est vrai que quand j'ai choisi de revenir, ce n'était pas à cause du plateau, pour être, pour être honnête. Mais le fait qu'ensuite, s'il se soit étoffé euh, mois après mois et, euh, et qu'il y ait de plus en plus de coureurs présents, forcément, ça fait quelque chose et je suis très, très content. Mais après, après voilà, au départ, je pense que je serai toujours dans la même optique, c'est-à-dire d'abord de, bah, d'essayer de, de me concentrer sur moi, d'aller au bout de la course et de donner le meilleur de moi-même. Et puis ensuite, bah, voilà, se soucier de la place, pour moi, ça, il faudra que ça intervienne que dans un second temps parce que sinon, c'est vrai qu'on a tendance à faire des bêtises pendant la course et donc je vais essayer de me souvenir de ça au, au long de la course. The climb to Katong at K147 is nothing like a walk in a park. During the final hours of the race, the whole body is challenged. Sore muscles, each stride is painful during this long and technical climb. Now the mental game is coming into play to help moving forward. Xavier now pulls off an amazing comeback. In this tough part of the race, he pushes the pace and overtakes Pau Capel. Jim Wamsley is finally finding a second win and manages to stay ahead of a charging Frenchman for the fourth place. Even though it will be impossible to come and challenge François Den and Kylian Jornet, the Frenchman progresses at a fast pace, pushing hard on his poles. K-147 
Kellyan doesn't use poles and thus bends over and pushes on his quads to add power to his legs. Tillotson is all smiles in third place, knowing that he's about to renew his amazing 2016 performance in an even more stacked field. The weather remains uncertain, sometimes drizzle, sometimes clear. This benefits the runners for the final 700-meter climb over 7K up to La Flégère. It replaces the climb up La Tête au Vent that has become inaccessible due to weather conditions. François' pain face doesn't lie. The climb is really brutal. Even top athletes have to slow down on this section of the course despite the warm cheering of the spectators. I think when I was leaving Triant, uh, people were telling me that I was moving a lot faster than both Francois and Killian and looking better than them. So it, then that, that thought creeped into my mind of how neat would that be if I could actually catch one of those guys, you know, legends of the sport. But, uh, you know, I think they, they proved to be in a league of their own. And uh, it, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll be able to run with them, but probably need a few more years of experience. Tollefsen tips over into the fog for the final descent towards Chamonix that he has visualized so many times. He can't relax though as Xavier Thévenard shows his immense talent and keep coming back extremely strong. He's now in fourth place and after winning UTMB twice could potentially still go get a spot on the podium. Jim Wamsley, who despite two long breaks in La Folie and Champelac 8 stations, has fallen back not too far down the field. The uphill to La Frégère, I was fighting with uh, Bowman because uh, I catch him in the uphill to La Frégère. And uh, in, in this uphill, I tried to, to push uh, for win one position. And then when I arrived to La Frégère, uh, yeah, I knew that. Jim was maybe four minutes uh, in front of me, but I knew also that maybe he was tired and yeah, I pushed uh, all that I had uh, in my legs. After 160 k's of racing and in a final descent, nothing is guaranteed for the top five runners. This 15th edition will undoubtedly have been one of the most exciting one ever. François Den, on top of his game, is finally allowing himself to take in this hard-earned win. Even though he never gave up, Killian has met stronger runner than him today. 
He's managing the descent on a slippery ground and safely holding off Tim Tollefson. Xavier Devna also needs to open up his try to stay ahead of Jim Wormsley and Pau Capel that are both still in the game. After 19 hours, 1 minute and 54 seconds, François Den takes his third win on UTMB in a record time in regards to the rough weather conditions. The depth of the field surely forced the top runners to push the pace more than they ever did on this course. With three wins, he's matching Killian's titles who finishes second to him. Tim Tollefson, whose immense joy burst out in the final kilometers, confirmed that he's the strongest U.S. runner on this course and taking third place two years in a row. The Jura natif Xavier Tevenin misses the podium by one spot, crossing the finish line in fourth place. Jim Walmsley sprints for the final meters of his race with his now very famous airy stride. He dreamt of becoming the first American to win this race and he finishes fifth for his first attempt. A performance that foresees a bright future for the coming years. A few seconds behind comes Pau Capel. As the night sets in over Chamonix, Nuria Piquez finally takes the win of UTMB. At 41 years old, the Catalan runner suffered a lot in the latest stage of the race. Her 45 minutes lead over Andrea Huser in Valorcine shrunk to a minuscule 2 minutes and 30 seconds at the finish line. Caroline Chavreau, last year's winner, dropped out of the race at the bottom of Grand Col Ferret. While Chamonix welcomes its champions, the rest of the pack is still far from the finish line. C'est la course la plus connue, enfin le trail le plus connu au monde. C'est tout simplement, donc c'est mythique, hein, 92 nations, 2300 participants, c'est un truc de fou. Quoi. Et, et, et pour l'avoir vécu, je te confirme que c'est un truc de fou. Quoi. Supporters on the course cheer on elite and amateurs equally to help them accomplish their dream. Je suis arrivé ici, j'avais décidé d'abandonner, puis ma femme et mes filles ne veulent pas. Alors je vais retourner. Runners still able to press on the pace will avoid spending a second night in the mountains. Kelly Emerson is about to accomplish her goal. Better yet, she's in fifth position in the women's field, having managed perfectly her first mountainous ultra-running race. 
The female runners who took on this challenge inspire sometimes even more than men, the public and supporters. Australian runner Kelly Emerson managed to run under the rain, on slippery terrain, over a night and fight the fatigue of such a long time out there. She knows that her dream is now so close to becoming reality. Kelly Emerson had initially planned to run under 30 hours and she crosses the finish line in just over 28 hours. This time is good enough for fifth place in the women's field, just ahead of Canadian runner Lisa Saint Laurent. Meanwhile, another night in the mountains starts for the rest of the field. Thousands of runners will witness another sunrise on their quest to the finish line. Like 1,686 runners, Olivier Cagnard will close the loop and reach his amazing goal. He finishes jogging, carried on by the ever so cheering crowds of downtown Chamonix. Runners receive the same welcome from first till last. The 2017 edition will have delivered a breathtaking race. Weather conditions, depth of the field, intensity of the fight until the end, and thousands of spectators along the course offered a one-of-a-kind race atmosphere to the participants. 
The prestige of the race and the Mont Blanc have turned a lot of heads in creating long-lasting memories for all participants and spectators who might start thinking of one day giving a try at UTMB or one of the Ultra Trail World Tour races. episode of the Ultra Trail World Tour will be back to Chamonix to cover two more races of the series that are the TDS and the CCC, both sister races of UTMB. Canada for the Ultra Trail Hurricana at the heart of Mother Nature and Wild Spaces. Mm -hmm. 